So this is a 800 gallon tank. It was a bed used on a 1975 Dodge D600 school bus refueling truck. And it had two tanks in here. I guess one for one for antifreeze, one for motor oil. The valves underneath it also had an air system. The truck didn't have the air system anymore when I got it. Um, I sold the truck, sold the chassis to a guy that was going to make a car hauler out of it. Uh, so I kept the bed. It had a spot in the back for putting tires. And all this stuff was, I had a company for a while where I ran around at night and collected vegetable oil from restaurants. So that was my sight glass there and then my hose rack and I had a system of hoses all hooked up to be able to um, be able to swap the pumps around and, and do uh, I could offload the truck and onload the truck with the same pump and pumps trash now but it wasn't really running right towards the end anyway so I do plan to mount the bed on this trailer I put duals on it I moved the axle back so that it would fit in the wheel well um, but that's not the purpose of this video today this video is for my refueling trailer that I'm building and no this this won't be for the refueling trailer uh, I'll probably make it into a water trailer to use on my property uh, with a pump and stuff in case of a fire uh, I'll be able to just hook up to it and tow it somewhere and, or if I need a bunch of water well my purpose today is to harvest the the old meter and the hose reel to mount on my new fuel trailer it even has a little crank so that way I can I think it held like 50 feet of hose or 25 feet of hose something like that but so I need to pick pick the front of the trailer up with uh, <clears throat> with my little jack because I don't have the wrecker here it's over at the other property so I'll put the jack under here pick it up enough put some more blocking under it and uh, that way I can access the bolts at the bottom of this to uh, get it out of there So that was pretty easy. Apparently at some point in the past I'd already taken the bolts out of the strainer. So that made that easy. It was four half inch bolts for the hose reel. As you can see there was a little bit of fuel left in the, in the uh, filter. This is the handle for uh, cranking in the wheel or cranking in the reel. That tank is for any overflow from the strainer. It's actually full. Well, not full full. It's got something in it. So, I'm not really going to need that. My plan is to filter anything coming out of the tank. So, I'm just going to recirc anything that does manage to come out of the trainer straight back to the tank. So, this all this plumbing will change. So, there's your strainer that protects the, protects the meter. Let's see. Looks like that thing moved. If it's true, 1,504,084. Cuz it doesn't have a decimal point there. Unless that's 15,000 gallon 15,040 gallons 0.84. I'm not sure. I can look up the uh I'm sure I can look up the model number and figure it out. Probably even find the uh <coughs> Oh, oh, excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I'm sure I can look it up and find the, uh, probably even find the uh, manual for it and everything. So, it does reset. So, I'm looking forward to using that. There's the uh, reel, as you can see. That's 
don't think that's supposed to be doing that. Um, I think the reel's supposed to be tighter, tied to it somehow. The handle goes over here. This little pillow block needs to go in farther, and then the handle goes on that end. So, figure out where I'm gonna mount that stuff on the on the trailer. Um, the pump I'm gonna use, I'll show you, came off of this exact truck, so it will be uh, matched right to the pump or to the uh, to the meter. It won't shouldn't over pressurize it or overflow it since uh since like i said it came off this truck so it's a quick i have a couple of these i don't know if that seals it's pretty loose i'll probably sh sh uh, swap it with a um ball valve either a ball valve or a, a different type of valve i think they just put that in there because of the because of clearance issues and i found tons of pipe fittings and valves and stuff so I'm gonna take all that and never know what you need so let's go over to the trailer so this is the trailer I'm gonna use it's a military fuel trailer um, it's called a type a tac 1b I don't remember what the date was on this it's 500 gallons aluminum tank dual wheels um it was used by forestry service down in florida they took they took all the brake system off they put civilian lights on it um they built these extra fender pieces put that cheap metal top on the front but you can see where the old fuel pump went, where the base was. So there's no connections underneath. All connections are up top. You know, the return vent line and the, uh, the suction. Really digging their hose reel that probably only worked for maybe 10 feet of hose. But anyway, as cool as that is, that's coming off. So my plan is to mount on the front. Come to help, Piggy. I got a Yanmar diesel runs 3600 rpm i got a um black mar uh pump that runs 500 rpm and it actually has a shaft on either end so you can run clockwise or counterclockwise and just move the cover uh, i'll have to either get a gear reducer because it says this should run between 520 and 640 and uh, obviously that'll run at 3600 and this is the pump that came off that fueling truck go through filter through the meter through the hose reel and into the trucks so that's the plan now it's raining so we'll see when we can get back to it so I've kind of been laying out where everything want, where I want everything to go put this one inch hose reel here then I'll build a weld up a stand but that's the right height put the meter right there so you can see it while you're pumping this will be direct direct connection here with a valve for the hose reel. This is gonna go down more at an angle and across and go in with a valve to that pipe over here. And this pipe will connect to this pipe. And probably on the other side of this, I'll have a drain underneath so I can drain the entire system. That's, the, that's gonna be the low point. So if I need to do any maintenance on it, I can open all the valves, open that drain into a bucket and drain all the fuel out. Now I've already I've already threaded this got this on here and it runs to the rear to a one and a half inch connection this is going to go underneath the clamp and this hose will come off and go around these hose holders and that's in case I want to offload a lot of fuel at once now 
what I'm going to do with that is it's going to run to here. So if I need to run it through the meter, I'll just open the valve that I'll put right here off of that line and it can run out the back to the big hose. If I don't want it, if I'm just transferring fuel, this is going to, with another valve, connect directly to the pump discharge. So I can pump straight off of here with the inch and a half. On the other side, where I'm going to put the pump and the, the engine and the pump. The engine will sit right here. Pump will be right here. The filter is going to be on the front. I'll build them out for the filter. That's the engine. So I'm going to put a two inch suction connection over here to go to the go into the pump. I'm also going to connect it to this two inch line that comes out of the tank. This goes in and down. So that way I can pump fuel out of the tank with a valve or I can pump fuel through a two inch connection. You know, I can hook it to a big tank or go somewhere where they can hook a two inch hose to it and I can fill the tank without even opening the top. It does have an air vent, both way air vent. So um, you could fill it through that, but uh, it's best to open the top whenever you're fueling or unfueling just in case the valves messed up so you don't collapse the tank or you know blow you fill it so high that it blows out around the the top cover um, I'm also going to put the hand pump on here so I can I can uh, pump by hand to fill it up the uh, uh, I'm going to put connections on there as well because I have a 110 volt pump and then I also have a, a 24 volt pump so I can use either of those just setting them on here and connecting them up to a discharge and a suction I still run it through the whole system I can I can suck it out of the tank and run it through the meter the filter and the meter and the hose reels or the hose reel with that electric pump, either electric pump. or So I'll have basically four ways to take this, to take fuel off of this. I can use the diesel pump, the hand pump, the 110 electrical, or the 24 volt electrical. So that just gives me a um, wide range of options depending on what I'm fueling, where I'm fueling, and what's going on and everything. So if the engine's down, I could still do it by hand. If the, if, electricity is easier to use or I'm filling one of my army trucks I could just plug the cable in and use the electric off the truck so uh, I did cut that step I did cut that step off over here so I'll clean that fender up um, and straighten it up and then I'm gonna put a new top over everything when I'm ready um, I still need to cut that off over here straighten everything up so but that's the uh, that's the plan. That's where we're at. I got a pipe threader that I've been using, and uh, there's a ton of fittings that I I already had most of them laying around. Um, I had bought some, but I bought long pipe and this pipe threader. So that's what I'm going to be using to. I've already threaded some pipe, but that's what I'll be using to make the pieces. And I bought a big bag of miscellaneous smaller pipe nipples. Um, all the small stuff. Stuff like this, you know, it, it's hard to clamp that in there and try to thread it because the, th the threading die takes up so much. You know, that takes up almost all of the what you can clamp. So all the small stuff, it's just easier to buy it um, with the setup that I have. So I'm gonna put a pressure gauge on there so I can tell what the pump's putting out and uh, make sure that the relief valve on it's working constantly. I may actually add an additional relief valve, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put unions in places so that it's easy to take apart for maintenance. I'm a big firm believer in uh, the ability to do maintenance on things and and to make stuff as easy as possible. There's a lot of engineers. If I meet them in the afterlife, I'm gonna kick them in the butt because of the way they design something. You just can't work on it without taking the whole thing apart or whatever. So um, anyway. That's the plan, that's where I'm at. Uh, and I'll just keep filming as stuff stuff happens. 
Thanks for watching.